फ्रेंड्स टुडे इज हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी सिक्स फ्राइडे ग्रूप मीटिंग द स्पीकर इज अवर बिलउड सीनियर एडवोकेट किरण सूरी एर्लियर आलो शी एड्रेस्ड एंड एडवर्स पोजिशन आन ट्वेंटी एथ सेप्टेंबर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन दट इज अ वन ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ फ्राइडे ग्रूप मीटिंग द टूडे टापिक इज इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ एमेंडेड सेक्शन सिक्स ऑफ द हिंदू सक्सेशन ऐक्ट इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी नाइन एस सी सी पेज वन दट इज अ थ्री जज जजमेंट विनीत शर्मा वर्सेस राकेश शर्मा एंड अदर्स इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉमिनेंट वन एर्लियर जजमेंट ओवर रूल सर्टन थिंग्स आर सेटल इन दिस वी रिक्वेस्टेड मैडम शी एक्सेप्टेड वी आर वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू यू मैडम सो इट्स अ वेरी बर्निंग टॉपिक एंड एवरी फैमिली सम इश्यूज आर एराइजिंग सो वी आर चूज इन यू सो प्लीज श्रीधर पोतराज राकेश कुमार यादव राहुल शर्मा अमित प्रताप सिंह नीरज श्रीवास्तव Introduce yourself. I am Dinesh Goswami. Yes. Now, sir. Thank you, sir. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Introduce. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. The topic for the day has been explained by Mr. Shashi Rao. Since we are cons. today discussing only one judgment i'll put it in three parts first part would be why the there was a need to refer the matter to the three judges bench and second the courts have considered what was the law as on the date when the amended act came into force that is 99 2005 existed and the third would be what would be the interpretation of amended section 6 no so far as the first part is concerned there were there are number of judgments but mainly two judgments which showed the divergence of opinion that is prakash versus gulawati and danamas case so far prakash versus gulawati is concerned that judgment is of 2016 passed by two judges bench in that case the court held while interpreting section 6 that there should be living quarter co partner and the living daughter as on the date of amendment for the daughter to get her rights as a co partner so living of the co partner and that is her father was condition which was put for her to become entitled to the co partnerly rights under the amended act then came the second judgment again by the two judges bench that is dalamas judge it was in 2018 those two judges bench taken a view that so far as living father as on the date of amendment of uh, section 6 is concerned that's not necessary if the daughter is living as on that day she is entitled to become co partner subject to the limitations which have been placed under section 61 and section 65 subject to those limitations she would be entitled there was clear divergence of opinion whether the co partner father should be alive as on the date of amendment for the daughter to get her co partner rights or not matter was referred to three judges bench justice mishra was heading the bench now the court first discussed what is the law existing as on the date when the amendment has come into force and also observed that unless we understand the law as on the date 
it is not possible to interpret section 6 which has been amended while doing that they firstly discussed historical background and the difference between joint hindu family and coparsonary <coughs> then they discussed what is the, how the coparsonary properties can be made coparsonary is undivided share of the coparsoners then the court discuss that how undivided properties will be devolved upon the other persons devolution of the undivided shares and then they also discussed what was the rights of women under 1937 act and also under section 61 which was existing prior to the amendment so far as the first issue is concerned court found that court observed and noted that in earlier decisions what the court has said the so far as hindu law is concerned it is progressive it is not static and whenever the statute has been silent the judicial decisions have given source of law to uh, hindu law which is progressive and it has progressed over the years the court also found that while deciding the these decisions the court has been guided by several factors some of them are like sources are customs equity conscious and justice they have governed them to interpret the law in a proper manner then the court discussed what is the difference between joint hindu family and the coparsonary so far as joint hindu family is concerned joint hindu family is a larger body and it consists of legally descended members of common ancestry including women that is wives and daughters of unmarried daughters of the coparsoners the court also noted that so far as the property of joint family is concerned that will be joint property in the joint enjoyment and possession of all the members of the and they can be divided and separated only by distribution of their share division of their assets merely because there is a separation of food or worship that would not amount to separation coparsonary was considered the coparsonary is a narrower body which consists of male lineal descendants of the common ancestor up to 3 generations son grandson great grandson great great grandson will not be coparsonary and court considered that so far as coparsonary is concerned they have about six incidents firstly the coparsoner will get right by birth and of course some cases they have said by adoption also uh, coparsonary rights have been given but otherwise it's by birth the coparsoner will get a right second incident will be that coparsoner is entitled to seek partition of his share third till such time partition takes place the coparsonary property will be held by the coparsoners in joint enjoyment and possession fourth is coparsonary <coughs> property cannot be sold or alienated unless it is for legal necessity or by the consent of all the coparsoners court considered all these aspects of uh, coparsonary and specifically noted that the rights of coparsoner in the coparsonary property is not <coughs> specific it is fluctuating with the incidents happening the fluctuation depends upon death and birth in the family like today if you have two sons and your the share of the person is one third tomorrow another son is born the share would be decreased or one son goes son will be in uh, the their share will be increased so it's fluctuating 
it's not static no defined uh, no defined shear is there the court also noticed that as on the day when the 1937 act has come into force there was no codification of women's right then this 1937 act came into force by which a widow of a hindu co-partner was given a right to seek partition she doesn't become a co-partner and her right was always limited limited estate right under the 1937 act which got enlarged with the hindu succession act 1956 and section 14 we have been in number of cases so therefore right of women from 1937 was limited right and from 1956 it got enlarged but daughters were had no right as a copas it was copas only was consisting of only male members the property which was then the court next dealt with how the copasnary property will be formed copasnary property will be formed up to the three generations and copasnary will get a right by birth now if there is one sole surviving copasnary is left then the property in the hands of sole surviving copasnary will become his separate property but only till such time he gets another year if he gets son prior to 2006 then it becomes copasnary property in the hands of two of them and after 2006 even daughter so sole surviving copasnary's right of separate property was only till such time the next copasnary is born the alienations which are done by sole surviving copasnary during that period when he was uh, ha- having the property as a separate property they are protected but the moment next copasnary is in picture then he was having all the rigors of copasnary properties uh, limitations there to the court also consider that under section 6 an unamended section 6 property of copasnary would be won by way of survivorship subject to a condition that in case there are female members in the family then the property will devolve uh, by intestate testamentary uh, dispositions or succession not by survivorship but otherwise the property will devolve by the survivorship to other parents for example if you have a male member in the family he dies without any female members in the family his right his property will devolve upon the other male members who are part of the copasnary and not on the by succession to his own legal heirs that was so far as the law as on sections as on the date when the amended section came into force that is 99 2005 now our main concern here today is how the amended section has been interpreted by the courts in this then if you look at section 51 of uh, para 51 section amended section 6 has been reproduced in that the court notice the section is on or from the date of commencement of hindu succession amendment act 2005 in a joint hindu family governed by mitakshala the daughter of a copasnary shall by birth become a copasnary in her own right in the same manner as the son first we'll deal with six, section 61 while dealing with this section the first question which the court 
was posed was whether this section is prospective or retrospective. The court held and they took a view that so far as section 6 is concerned, it is not retrospective, but it is retroactive. Court also explained that when a statute operates in future and come into force as on the date when the amendment has taken place or statute has come into force, then it will be prospective. Retrospective statute would be when it applies from some earlier date and that retrospectivity can take away even the vested rights of the persons. But so far as retroactive statute is concerned, that operates in future, but its operation depends upon some antecedents event, which is prior to the date on which the amendment has come. In the present case, the antecedent event is birth of the daughter. That is, when since that birth she becomes co-personal. If antecedent event would be the birth of daughter and therefore the court held it is not prospective, it is not retrospective but it is retroactive. It will act in future, operate in future with effect from 9-9-2005 but for the antecedent event which has taken place earlier. That was the uh, so far as retrospectivity and prospectivity of the act is concerned. Next issue which court was considering in this respect was whether a living co partner of a living daughter. The court considered and on the basis of the law which is already settled that there are two type of heritage that is obstructed heritage and unobstructed heritage. The case in which the son or the daughter is born in the family and gets becomes entitled to the coparsary property that is unobstructed heritage. Obstructed heritage depends upon some factor which will take which will come into effect subsequently. For example, if one of the co personal dies, the share of that co personal devolves on by survivorship on other uh, co personals This is a case of obstructed heritage. The court considered that the, so far as Section 6 1 is concerned, it has not used the words living co partner and also the daughter who is getting the right under this section is getting unobstructed right not the obstructed right unobstructed right will depend upon the birth of the daughter unobstructed obstructed right will depend upon the death of some of the co partners since the present case where the daughters are getting right Co-personally right. It depends upon the birth of the daughters. Therefore, it's unobstructed right. And whether the father is alive as on the date of amendment or not is immaterial. The court considered these uh, aspects on uh, so far as living co partner and the prospectivity is concerned. Then court also held. So uh, now you see section 6.3 because there is, a, there is a sea change in that. By section 6.3 that survivorship rule has been abrogated because earlier section 6.1 said it will, thus, it will be by survivor, devolved, uh, the rights will devolve by survivorship, not by inheritance or testamentary uh, disposition. But section 6.3, there is a change where they say, I'll just read it for you. Where a Hindu dies after the commencement of Hindu Succession Act, 
as Hindu Succession Amendment Act 2005, his interest in the property of a joint Hindu family governed by Mitakshara law shall devolve by testamentary or interstate succession, as the case may be, under this Act and not by survivorship. So the rule of survivorship was abrogated by amended section 6.3. By 6.4, the court, the statute has given, as statute has given a power of being a co-partner in the property, 6.4 talks about the liabilities that in case whatever are the limitations of co-partnery property or co-partnery rights, that is a uh, pious obligation towards father, that all even daughter would be liable to. That is 6, 4, they considered this aspect. Now, the actually the main hard one and main difficulty is proviso to section 6, 1 and 6, 5. What is saved under proviso to 6, 1 is, I will just read that proviso. Provided that nothing contained in this section, this subsection shall affect or invalidate any disposition or alienation, including any partition or testamentary disposition of property which had taken place before 20th December 2004. So, 20th December 2004 is a cut off date. Then, with this, we will uh, also read 6.5. Nothing contained in this section apply to a partition which has been affected before 20th December 2004. For the purposes of this section, partition means any partition made by execution of a deed of partition duly registered under the Registration Act or partition affected by decree of a court. So now let us see what is protected. Protection is given to disposition or alienations, firstly, if they are complete, then that protection is given to alienation or dispositions prior to 20th of December 2004. Then what was protected was testamentary ownership, a testamentary disposition. Now take a case court uh, while dealing with it, it, the example given by the court is that if there is a will and the person who, who the testator dies prior to the 2012-2004, then the will, effect of will is complete because it comes into force only on the date of death of the testator. And that testamentary disposition of property by will would be valid. But in case the person, testator, he dies after the, this date, then the consequences of will has not come into force. As a result, testamentary disposition after the, this date would not be valid. So the court, after giving the example, said that daughters will get their right and it, the property which is disposed of by testamentary disposition and the testator dies after this date, then this disposition is not protected. Another, the court was now next was considering of partition as stated in 6.5. According to the explanation which is given to section 6.5, what is protected by the statute is registered partition deed or the partition affected by decree of the court. The court was balancing between two facts because court was is full, fully aware that prior to this date, oral partition is recognized. Unregistered family registered family uh, arrangements have been recognized, and in fact, our famous Kale's case, in which they said that even the recording of the past transactions do not need. Uh, registration. So, court was balancing between these the aspect that earlier it is permissible and now so far as this explanation is concerned it only protects registered documents or a decree of the court and not the oral partition or the uh, family arrangements, unregistered family arrangements. 
the court took a very balanced stand that so far as the party regi registered partition and decree of the court is concerned there is no problem that of course is protected but so far as oral partition or family arrangements are concerned the person who is claiming protection under that under the oral partition and or the unregistered family uh, family arrangement the burden is heavy on him he has to prove it by contemporaneous public records for example if there is a oral partition earlier to this date and on the basis of that oral partition or family arrangement the properties which have fallen to a particular uh, person's co-partner shares they have got it transferred or mutated in the public records and those public records contemporaneous public records are available then that will come to the rescue of the person and then ultimately we held that it is contemporary records are available and the oral partition or unregistered family uh, arrangements can be proved by that but in case there is an oral partition or um, family arrangement where the parties have taken no action mm. on it and there is no contemporary public record to establish that such a partition has taken place then it will be difficult for the purpose especially because the court was considering and take court has taken into consideration that in case oral partitions and unregistered documents are permiss permitted then in that case there are chances of bogus documents being created to <coughs> defeat the rights of daughters which are being given now after a long long uh, time which they they should have been given earlier but it is being given now those rights will be defeated will be can be defeated so court was considering the partition but therefore the court put a condition to that that okay because it was permissible earlier therefore they cannot uh, come out of it but to prove it contemporaneous public records would be necessary so i'll do that if page 137 if you find per 137 no one more aspect was there before the court uh, because in partition partition by court of law not the court was considered when the partition is complete there were when we file a suit for partition there is a preliminary decree passed first then we ask for final decree proceedings there are some matters in which during the pendency of final decree proceedings the new act came into force amendment came into force the issue before the court was whether by preliminary decree passing of preliminary decree partition is complete because shares have been defined under the decree 1/3rd 1/5th or whatever and final decree proceedings is only in the form of execution that was the issue which was before the court now this the court here explained and they held that the partition will get complete only after the final decree proceedings are completed and there is a partition by mutes and bound even without the amendment the shares are the shares of partitioners are fluctuating and after preliminary decree if something has happened that has to be considered by the in the final decree proceedings if somebody dies somebody born some other uh, thing that has to be considered while passing final decree if that is the case then section 6 which has been amended now in which doctors get right as a co-partner then they will be entitled for their right during the pendency of final decree proceedings it is respect it is part of the fact that by preliminary decree some rights or some portions or some percentage has been assigned to a particular co-partner so court considered that aspect and held that 
partition gets complete only and only with the completion of partition and partition by mutes and bound of the final degree proceedings and not by preliminary degree and at in para 137 because there are so many judgments referred to so many reasoning is given which is not possible to uh, just take out the uh, some portion that what exactly has been uh, held in the judgment uh, 137.1 the provision contained in substituted section 6 of hindu succession act 1956 confer status of co-partner on the daughter born before or after the amendment in the same manner as son with same rights and liabilities then 137.2 the rights can be claimed by daughter born earlier with effect from 99 2005 with savings as provided in section 61 as to the disposition or alienation partition or testamentary disposition which had taken place before the 20th december 2004 since the right in co-partner is by birth it is not necessary that further co-partner should father co-partner should be living as on 99 2005 then the statutory fiction of partition created by the proviso to section 6 of hindu succession act as originally enacted did not bring about actual partition or destruction of co-partnery the fiction was only for the purpose of ascertaining share of deceased co-partner when he was survived by a female member of class 1 as specified in schedule to 1956 or by a female heir of class 1 as specified in the schedule to 1956 act or male relative of such female the provisions of the substituted section are required to be given full effect notwithstanding that a preliminary decree has been passed the daughters are to be given share in co-partnery equal to that of the son in pending proceedings for final decree or in appeal in view of the rigor of provisions of explanation to section 65 of 1956 act a plea of oral partition cannot be accepted as the statutory recognized mode of partition affected by a deed of partition deed registered under provisions of registration act or affected by the decree of the court however in exceptional cases where plea of oral partition is supported by public documents and partition is finally evinced in the same manner as if it had been affected by a decree of court it may be accepted a plea of partition based on oral evidence alone cannot be accepted so the oral partition or uh, unregistered document by which you have partition unless it is supported by contemporaneous public documents it is not uh, uh, accepted now the effect of the judgment is the whim, the daughters will get right from 99 2005 as a co-partner like a son but and and father of need not be alive as on the date when the act has come into force secondly that so far as savings are concerned what is saved is registered partition or the de- de- partition by decree of the court oral partition is protected only if it is supported by public contemporaneous public documents and uh, so far as preliminary decree is concerned preliminary decree is not the complete completion of partition and during the final decree proceedings if the act has come into this amendment has come into force daughter will be entitled to her share in the property the only uh, under section 61 earlier section 61 they had created a legal fiction because according to me what has in the earlier judgment that is in prakash versus kulawati the court was considering that as on the date when the co-partner dies then on that date notional partition opens even though it is not a real partition but if there are female members in the family then notional partition is taken place just before the death of the person and accordingly share is assigned even though not it is not a real partition that's why probably uh, in uh, uh, 
प्रकाश वर्ष झूलावती केस द कोर्ट हेल्ड दैट डेथ ऑफ द कोपासनर प्रायर टू दिस डेट वुड डिप्राइव द डॉटर बिकॉज पार्टीशन वुड हैव ओपन एज ऑन द डेट ऑफ इज डेथ नोशनल पार्टीशन एंड देर फॉर शी इज नॉट इंटाइटल बट नाउ इन दिस जजमेंट द कोर्ट हैज क्लियरली सेट दैट शी वुड बी इंटाइटल इफ द फादर इज देर इज नो लिविंग फादर एज ऑन द डेट ऑफ कमिंग इन टू फोर्स ऑफ दिस no i was told that i have to finish in 40 no, minutes minute, and 20 no, minutes no, will be question answer no, no. Okay. come on please until you finish it finish it so most important uh, because i thought uh, maybe some question no, no, answer no, 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 no. the questions will come but uh, after you finish <laughs> there are all of questions so therefore i will i will just uh, put it like this now the court while uh, in this judgment has certain paragraphs have been given for every aspect I will just give you those paragraph numbers so that uh, it is easy for you. Now, uh, when I have I have pointed out to you that there is a dif- uh, historical background as well as difference between the joint Hindu family and co-partnery and incidents of co-partner, the court has dealt it in paragraph twenty-two to twenty-five and thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-two. Then the court considered. sole surviving co-partner <coughs> that was considered in paragraph 38 to 31 28 to 31 then the court considered fluctuating of the right property rights of every co-partner on the birth and death of the co-partner the court dealt with it in paragraph 41 to 43 and <coughs> rights of uh, women as well as the hindu widow under 1937 act was dealt with in paragraph 34 to 35 and 38 the court was dealing with that question of unobstructed and obstructed heritage in paragraph 48 and 49 whether it is prospective or retrospective the court dealt in paragraph 60 to 69 then effect of enlargement of daughter's rights and uh, acquisition of rights in co-partnery property that was from para 70 to 78 enlargement of rights and women's right and partition and effect of statutory fiction that was para 85 to 95 100 108 109 111 100 12 100, 100, then law pertaining to preliminary preliminary decree and final decree proceedings when when it becomes final is para 96 to 99 and 114 and also court considered that if the change of law during the pendency of final decree proceedings that was in para 101 102 and 107 and very important aspect which of course hard burn is section 65 uh, basically expl- uh, proviso to 61 and uh, explanation to 65 that court dealt in detail from para 115 and 124 130 131 and 135 and 136 124 130 130 to 31 135 and 136 and answer the reference in para 137 which i have uh, taken you to 157 answer yeah. mm-hmm. 137 is the answer to reference so the answer today is that the daughter is entitled in the co-partnership of property even if father is not alive as on the date of coming into force of the amendment act daughter is also entitled if preliminary decree is passed and the act has come into force from in during the final decree proceedings daughter is also entitled if there is no registered partition or disposition testamentary disposition Uh, after the uh, particular date 
and also entitled in case the the oral partition which the parties have entered into earlier if it is not supported by public documents that's my yeah. so Vinita Sharma, 2020, Volume 9, SCC, Page 1. Thank you very much, Madam. It's a very interesting uh, judgment. Yeah. <laughs> several okay. paragraphs, several pages, you make a lot of hard work seems to be. Everything you have simplified very tough, like mathematics, like this judgment, my opinion. You have simplified, it has enlightened everybody. So, now, question answer I will first prefer Sridhar Potarazu. He appeared as a, one of the petitioner. Yeah, one of the petitioners. One of the petitioner. He may ask some questions first, yes. madam. Then, persons are can rest. Madam, now that the law is settled, uh, but my uh, query is, uh, what is the effect of this judgment on certain events which were lawful prior to the amendment and now have, uh, by virtue of the amendment, been uh, uh, declared to be ineffective because they are not registered documents? What will be the impact in real terms on ground? If you ask me, there will probably be another judgment. Because this is, because this is, um, in fact, uh, uh, only last week we were doing a matter before Justice Joseph. In that, the partition has taken place in 1981. That is not a registered partition. It's a part. There is a partition deed of uh, in 1981. But there is no corresponding records by which the uh, there are two sons and five. Uh, daughters. Now two sons distributed between themselves and uh, daughters of course were not uh, entitled at that point of time. And they from la 81 onwards till now they are dealing with their properties in their own way but now we are uh, faced with this situation where the partition is not registered and therefore what will be the validity of that and to what extent uh, the contemporary public records can be produced, it will all depend upon every, each case. Evidence. Like in case you have an unregistered partition deed and on the basis of that partition deed you have transferred some shares or somebody has exercised any right. Uh, sometimes what happens, there is a uh, uh, some involved property is given to A, A exercises right and sell it to somebody. Then contemporaneous public record or public document is created yes. then in that case probably you will get a support to prove your oral uh, uh, partition otherwise yes in case there is no contemporary contemporary uh, public document there is difficulty as of today tomorrow what happens we don't know but as of today there is some difficulty any supplementary question here? what will happen to the uh, what will be the effect on the concept of ouster or uh, people who have not claimed their rights? So the Hindu law recognizes that concept also by conduct, where people have moved away from the village and then not asserted their rights, even sons. So the concept of ouster from the property by conduct, etc., is recognized in law. Now, can that be a valid defense in a daughter's suit at this distance when the suit is based only on the 2005 amendment? So far as the principles of Oster and waiver is concerned, they have not been touched in this uh, judgment. So therefore, whatever law is existing as of today, the support can always be taken. That's why I said there is likely of another likelihood of another judgment soon, ah. because there are some grey areas still. Of course, it is judgment which is written so well and explained so well, and they have balanced the. Uh, rights of all the parties yes. but still there are some uh, uh, grey areas on the basis because oral partition was permissible unregistered partition deed was partition recording of partition was permissible yes. and number of them have uh, continued in the same manner without creating any public document yes. like pro like families who have partitioned they have not sold the property 
or they have other otherwise not got it mutated in their names and but they are continuing separately uh, they they will be some uh, difficulty on that sir justice basan sir please sir man please sir enlighten for us sir the concept of ouster when you don't have right in the property on the relevant date how can there how could there be ouster the question that you asked you know, i'm thinking any day prior to the, this uh, 2005 she had no rights in the property that right? she was not a co-passna how can you oust a person who got rights later the ouster concept would come in in a current suit the judgment comes in 2018 So 2005, the law has come into effect for all practical purposes. Right. So therefore, from 2005 onwards, say for 12 years or 16 years, no suit is filed. If a suit is now filed in 2018 for the first time, if there is no right asserted after 2005 until the judgment is understood. Sir, I'm, I'm thinking aloud, and not that I'm having final answer. No, no, that is what was in my mind. No, right, I understand, but. this uh, registered partition concept arises only if it is done prior to the no, i'm not date. a registered partition sir i'm only an ouster now in this no, no. so that whatever see on and with effect from the date uh, mentioned in 61 she will be a co-passner right. she may lose her right thereafter in any manner known to law precisely right that cannot uh, see supposing after the relevant date for 12 years you ouster Definitely, that principle would apply. That's, 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 that's precisely what I, I was, was talking saying. about. The anti and the anti no, 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 no. Those anterior no, no. to on the red, no, she had no, no right. No, no, no. no, no, no. I agree. Com- I agree completely with you. There shouldn't be a problem at all, because she got a right. The the co the, she became a co partner and became a co partner on uh, the date of commencement of the amendment. Act. After that date, she could be ousted, and then the period of ouster, if you satisfy, you can definitely say. I can find nothing in the Act which would say that after this day they cannot even enter into an oral partition. True. Right. Yeah. If you if you go strictly by the, I have a doubt on what they have said. I'll come to that later. <laughs> But the explanation uh, applies only to partition deeds prior to the ninety four. True. That's two thousand four. True. See, subsequent to two thousand and four, there is nothing that stands in the way of an oral partition between the members of the family. So I was just yes, you are right. Your point is right. Right, in a suit. right. right. You see, in one but twelve years later, wait from two thousand five. Now, of course, that is your opinion. See, in one case, what has happened is the women, the daughters have relinquished their right. Correct. Prior to two thousand five, and and that relinquishment is by registered document. Ha, that is a registered document. But the courts are still considering it on the basis. that what has been relinquished was the right which she, this right she did not have earlier so that relinquishment of right which he had at that point of time cannot be equated with this right, right. so therefore right. that relinquishment you cannot say that, that uh, it is relinquished this right of a future uh, future yeah that's yeah. Right. so therefore yeah. this right is different than the Absolutely. earlier right which she has relinquished so that matter is also Most being of the uh, considered right which come in future, future yeah, cannot be right. relinquished in present in pre- right. that's right so that is still being considered uh, Maybe so Ali- alienations are protected, <laughs> isn't it? Alienations prior to the date of the act are protected by the proviso to six one. That's right, but that is if it is complete alienation. Like for example, if there is agreement to sell. Of course, that they may not. Sell. So it's a complete I'm, alienation which is uh, yeah. protected. No, complete alienations are protected, and therefore, supposing. <laughs> Uh, the co-partners having a, a portion of the property uh, by say oral partition or some arrangement, they have alienated the property. Would that still be available? Then there is no co-partition property at that point of time. Now I thought the, the on the day when the act came into force, the the woman must be there and co-partition property must also be there. Both have to be. If you are already alienated it and that alienation is without any restriction. If you have already alienated it, the co-partner, the co-partner has no property. No, no unless the co-partner property. property is there and this woman is also both are there on the date of coming into force of the act, how could she claim any right in a non-existent property? In other words, you buy a share of a company whose assets are already yeah, dissolved. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, that that way, I don't think. See, that should also not create a problem. 
and you know this this observation by this court about contemporaneous documents affecting and I mean justifying an oral partition is very very shaky according to me. That that will yeah be, uh, very uh, very shaky. How can you do that? Uh -huh. Because when the explanation says partition means a registered document only or a decree of court, that is what it says. Then how can you say that a partition? Justified by the contemporaneous documents will come under that. Maybe there was great uh, pressure or circumstances for the court. And you also find this partition is not a 6 5 explanation. In this section, it says, please see that nothing contained in this section shall apply. 6 also, 6 1 also is part of the section. And yes, there, therefore, you cannot perhaps say that it's a provide. I, I read the judgment someplace, it is said explanation to section 6 5. No. According to me, it's an explanation to section 6. Read it. Nothing contained in this section, 6 5 says. In this section. That's and it. explanation says for the purpose of this section. That's it. And therefore, a partition deed cannot be justified now. Oral partition cannot be justified. This portion of it is very, very suspicious. No, but court was really considering because prior to this, uh, this uh, act, uh, uh, amendment coming into force, oral partition was permissible. Yeah. And what, also, what, what was what permissible the, was that unregistered. That is what they said will not be recognized. No, rec that can be only for <laughs> future. That, so, therefore, so far as uh, the yes. unregistered. Now, we said past transaction can be uh, by memorandum of partition. It can be recorded and it can be unregistered document. You are stultifying the explanation there. Yes, sir. You are stultifying the no, explanation. I mean, if I may just supplement there, the yes. first proviso yes. deals with disposition. No. Disposition could include a statutory notional partition, sir, not no, which is not a partition where there is a separation of status for the other co partners. It is only a determination of a share of a deceased co partner. So, therefore, to that extent, the observation but to me seems to be then, then sustainable. The then the question of living uh, father would come in. No, no, no. I am only on the question of this protection that the court has given that oral evidence with public documents can be provided. That could be with reference to the notional determination of a deceased uh, co partner's share if they have acted upon it. That can be in the only context in which that paragraph can be read. No, I think so probably they were, they were balancing the uh, earlier law. No, not, against the statute, not against the statute. Not against the statute. Even no. if balancing it. No, I'll, I'll, no, I, 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 I'll look at it very simply. What does the law say? You may not have been a co partner at all till the relevant date. But from today onwards, you are a co-partner. Yes. So for that, the co-partner property must be there, and the the woman co-partner must also be there. If the co-partner property is not there, it has already been alienated by disposition, etc. Coming to the proviso to section six one, there can be no property, and without the property, a co-partner can part be. of it could be disposed. It's not necessary. Yeah, right, right. If no, the no. part is available, no, in a case, so the, no, I, I, the rights I, I can see. I have seen that also. We, Supposing part of the property is there, she will be a co-partner in respect of that part of the property alone. You see, alienation is recognized under the proviso to section 6.1. You cannot say that that is co-partner property. That will be a matter for driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that will be where we come in. Okay. Yeah. Right. That, that is when we all come in. What is your answer, madam? No. Please, just. See, so that, that of course, so far as the uh, section 6, uh, proviso to section 6.1 is concerned, it is talking about disposition and alienation, including any partition and testamentary disposition. So far, if there is a disposition or alienation prior to this date, and it is complete in all respect, that will not be disturbed even if it is part of the co property. Yeah, that's right. Then also that's it will not be disturbed. But, but merely because it will not be disturbed, does not mean that she does not become co partner no, so no, far no, as other properties I, I, are concerned, which are not alienated. No, no, she no, becomes obviously. a co partner only on the date of the amendment act. That's it. She doesn't become a co partner on any she earlier date. Yes. Transaction is protected. Transaction yeah. is protected. Yeah. Yeah. So she that's still that's remains the co partner and she is entitled to all other properties which are not. Uh, uh, now they take a case where there is an agreement to sell. That's what I was saying. Agreement to sell prior to the coming into force and sale it has yeah. not happened. Naturally, that is not protected. She yeah. becomes co-partner and she is entitled for her share in that property. That will be as though property of a co-partner within which she has a fractional right has been attempted to be alienated by the other co-partners, right? <laughs> no, right? That's the way it will have to be understood. No? No, I am just thinking aloud. Eh? No, yes, no, yes, final, no, but yeah. I thought, because there's a number yeah. of cases which are pending on different issues before the courts. And it takes a long time for the entire thing to be settled, but then the, 
Bhattacharya has something. But as of now, today, as of today, this is the law. So Bhattacharya has something. First of all, uh, Madam, Congratulations for an excellent presentation. In fact, uh, Nita Sharma happens to be the wife of a my classmate okay. since okay. college, and I, in fact, led the arguments in the, in the Supreme Court in this. The Supreme Court was there. First one hour entirely was about me, but anyway, my brain is not there. But one thing I just wanted to point out to this distinguished group that till 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 today. Vinita Sharma's decree by the Supreme Court has not been passed. The matter was listed in court number 7 as item 33 and a review petition it seems has been filed by Vinita Sharma's sub brothers. They have not been listed and on the last time the court passed an order that till the review petition is decided, Vinita Sharma, the Execution daughter who became a daughter by birth, in fact, the whole genesis of the case is that as Prakash versus Kulavati uh, said that it has to be a living daughter of a living Bhavastra and then Dhanamana subsequently. So, therefore, uh, what is the view of uh, you, Madam? Can uh, the decree not be passed by the Supreme Court and wait for a review? It's, more, it's almost two, two years now. Not, this is not the first time it is happening. Uh, so, uh, no comment on it. <laughs> no, no, Kashi, boldly make the comment, you know, so long as they review the rules and stay order. No, there is no stay. stay. There is no stay also. The review has not been no. no. All right, then it's a pure question of delaying passing. Uh, that's it. That's it. Pure, no, I thought there's 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 if there is no order, a court is bound to pass the decree, but so many cases, but this decree has to be passed, not passed. No, no but there are a number of cases like yeah. this. Any more, sir, only. your question is over, sir? Yes, please. Yeah, any more, uh, any more questions from your side? Please, for the question. Huh? Yeah, Muthu, please. Not necessary, it will come. Uh, you take Can it a little, little louder. Louder, or, uh, louder. You come to this side, little bit. Uh. What is the effect of this judgment on certain states? Yeah. No, no, take it this much, otherwise it will not cover, otherwise no use. Yeah. What have read in certain portals and anywhere, they say that there is conflicting opinions that is this judgment does not cover certain state enactments and certain state laws. Because if a daughter, if a daughter uh, is not entitled to property sharing property in a state enactment, then she is not covered by the judgment. That is what is some interpretation given by some people. So what is your opinion? So far as this judgment is concerned, it's governing the Hindu law of the Akshara, the Hindu sector of enactment. And uh, so far as state uh, enactments are concerned, I doubt whether uh, there are enactments which are contrary to this uh, Hindu sector of Because in Karnataka also I find that uh, right to Hindu women was given much prior. Uh, to, to, much prior to Hindu succession act actually yeah. coming into court. An amendment act. Am amendment. No, even even, uh, even, the, original even the original also. Right. Uh, and Tamil Nadu has given amendment. much before. Right. Okay. Right. You know, I think so, you know, if I'm right, yeah. since it uh, comes under the concurrent list, on and after the relevant date, that is uh, whatever, 12, say, 9, 9, 2004, this act will prevail over all it's other an enactments. An act. right? Right. Right. On and after that date. But if prior to that she already had a right to be a co partner or some of the other, so her right is certainly not affected by this. Yeah. Till this date she will be, she'll be, she'll continue to. I think that was his question if I, no, if I understood. Because he, he being from Karnataka, he knows we have earlier also there was yeah. which was protecting the rights of women to some extent. So I think those rights will continue till this date and <laughs> after this maybe this <laughs> the, 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 the rights of the will be determined under this act only. <laughs> Yes, and, one second. And normally, if uh, according to you, if you have uh, some right in the state act, which is uh, rather according to me lesser than this right, probably this will definitely prevail. Yeah. Even otherwise, uh, otherwise, also, otherwise yeah. concurrent list, uh, central enactment will no, but, override but, all of that. Uh, but I have one yeah. doubt no, that in case the right, yeah. is, right is more than what is provided under this, 
probably there will then be some no conflict. Sorry, the the, the yeah. point, that's the point. That's right. That's then so there is no there conflict. Two fifty four would not apply. Right. Article two fifty four will not apply, and then, then there will be this Yeah. But but I know that act. Yeah. Under that act, of course, uh, right is lesser than. Yeah. The married no. woman does yeah, not get so long. I request Jayesh. Who was about twenty nine? Yes. That's a state amendment of AP in 1985. Mr. Jayesh is giving a lot of thanks. On behalf of all, he will formally propose one. I'm not in the thanks part of it. We must all appreciate the amount of work that you have done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The formal vote of thanks will be by him. But what I want to tell you is, you know, we have all been enlightened on the various aspects. Thank you very much. So I'm grateful to you. Rights of women and Hindu law was a topic perhaps, I don't know, how many of us have thought about, but uh, the 90 page judgment you have made it a feast, an you know, intellectual feast. Hindu law never used to be a very favorite topic for us during law schools, <laughs> but it always hound us while we are practicing here. So these type of explanations are very intellectually challenging. And secondly, you said the last point there is an evolving jurisprudence in this area. That is also very heartening to note. So I am very thankful and on behalf of the Friday group, I extend my uh, thanks to you for bringing uh, to our notice this uh, particular area of law and all of us I think will be interestingly involved in looking into in this area so that uh, the new jurisprudence will be brought. Thanks a lot. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Madam, Madam, one Absolutely. more thing, can you give it to this paragraph wise analysis yeah, yeah. so that you can put it in the group so that many would be benefited. Which para deals with what? No, you don't have to search all the... That, that's the best part of it. Crisp analysis.